Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the Realist Podcast in the dunya, the three Muslims. Today we are missing Brother Fayyad. He just couldn't make it today, so may Allah bless him. And uh yeah, other than that, we got the main base here. Alhamdulillah, how are you doing, Anhil? Alhamdulillah, bro, how are you? Alhamdulillah, tamam, tamam. I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? All right. Someone, someone said we should put a, a recitation in, instead of a boring countdown. I think that actually is a brilliant. That's thing. that's pretty smart. Brilliant we just gotta thing. factor in the whole uh, copyright stuff. Yeah, maybe I'll ask Yahya for permission to use one of his recitations. Yeah, inshallah, that'd be beautiful. Actually. Yeah, bro. Imagine the hasanat that he could get, all because Mister Yusuf recommended it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allah People are already um arriving to certain conclusions. Remember what happened to Malcolm X as soon as he converted uh to to true Islam, he got offed. People already kind of jump into that uh that conclusion there. Yeah. All right. So um, I guess without further ado, let's um, talk about the elephant in the room, the thing that people are here for, the thing that everyone is talking about currently. Hopefully I can pull up the right video because there was a good video I got and a bad video I got. So let me hopefully pull up a better one. <laughs> The Matrix has attacked me. So, yeah, last night, uh, Andrew and Tristan Tate were both arrested in Romania. It's a, it's a long story. I don't know how much of it we should actually talk about, how much of it is important to talk about. But, um, Anhil, how surprised were you when you got the news? I wasn't surprised, man, when you sent me the message. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same here. A part of me, like, was shocked, and a part of me wasn't shocked. I was more so shocked that he was in Romania. Um. Mm. And uh, I was also a little shocked that it was out of anyone who would arrest him, it was the Romanian police, but to each of their own. There's a lot of different things going on surrounding the reason he was arrested. Was it this reason? Was it that reason? Um, I'm not going to say any terms that would get our, our video. Um, I'm just going to say de-leveled. But um, yeah, I think you guys know. Um, I, down. Yeah. Down. So yeah. Yeah. Did you um, did you catch when they were showing him inside of the actual like vehicle? He was like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I I wouldn't be surprised if they like were looking at it like this is just a, this is just a show, whatever. You know, let me just you know get some. Nah, like, bro, like, I'm I'm sure for them it it wasn't like as big of a deal as like a lot of people are making it out to be. Yeah, like <clears throat> if you if you actually looked at it, like there are people who are really overreacting to it. And the people that are overreacting to it are the ones who uh, have been hating on him. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, my, my friend asked a, a very interesting question on TikTok. He's like, to all the people that really don't like Andrew Tate, do you want him to be guilty or do you want him to be innocent? And it's a really good question because if someone hates him so much that they're like, I want him to be guilty, then that's like saying, I actually hope he did these crimes. I actually hope he did X, Y, Z, horrible things to these people just so he can be thrown in jail and I can hate him? Uh, or do you want him to be innocent, meaning that he never did these crimes uh, in the first place? So I think those are really interesting questions. If anyone really wants him to be thrown in jail, I think it's important that you ask 
yourself that question as well. Um, yeah, we have yeah. one super chat. The first one of the day, mail. I'll bless you. Yo says, I know this is extremely random and off topic, but could I hit you guys up uh, for off stream? I'm a revert for about seven months. My mom passed away this morning before I was able to give her proper dawah. May Allah bless you and um, and and forgive us all. Allahumma amin. Uh, of course, bro. Just hit my hit my DM, inshallah. Either the three Muslims on Instagram or me personally, Rami Al Khalil, and I will definitely get back to you. I'm sorry so much for your loss. May Allah make it easy for you. And uh, please DM me uh, if you need anything, inshallah. Inshallah. It's crazy, man. Yeah. May Allah have mercy on us, man. I mean, I mean. Um, so there are a few comments that stood out to me. Uh, firstly, uh, our brother here says, the three Muslims love you guys. Keep up the great work. May Allah bless you guys and all of us. Allahumma amin. I mean. Um, this one stood out to me. Tonic says, guys, the matrix, like you think they talk about, isn't real. Of course, people are in power, but it's not like some crazy stuff like in the movies. Yeah, no, this is what kind of made me laugh when like he's he's actually being detained. And then he literally said like, the matrix has attacked me. Like, you got to give it to him. The man's consistent, bro. Yeah. <laughs> the man's consistent. Yeah, 100%. And I think... I think um, using terms like the matrix is it could be beneficial and it could be not very beneficial because a lot of people can understand a term like the matrix, you know, and, and they kind of know what he's talking about when he says it. But at the same time, it opens the doors for people like this to um, and I'm not saying people like him, like it's a bad thing, but like people who d just don't believe it exists to kind of make it more of a fairy tale to be like, they're already using like a fairy tale kind of word, a movie word matrix. They made a movie about it. It must only happen in movies for people to run with that narrative is a little bit easier but there's an actual uh political term called the deep state which like you have the state then you have the deeper level of the st state which i guess instead of being lower it's actually higher because it's higher up on the um hierarchy and it's the people who are on top the people who are really deciding what gets pushed and i just want you guys to think about this um America has never had a, a, a time in its life or the West has never had a time in its life where it didn't have a face of liberalism, a face of, you know, democracy, a face for the West. The face at one point was fighting, you know, Germany in the 1940s um, and, and, you know, people putting people in their black book and so on and so forth and fighting for their freedom and so on and so forth. And uh, before that, it was the, them fighting a great enemy that actually was the Muslims in World War One, And then after World War II, you had the fight against, you know, crime and drugs. And then after that, you had the fight against the T-word, which were basically Muslims in the Middle East. They went and they fought and bombed and, and attacked our places in the name of liberalism and freedom. And now, if you think about it, what is the face of their agenda? The alphabet gang. That is the face of their liberalism and so on and so forth. And that is what they're pushing nowadays. So even if you don't believe in a matrix, you have to understand, like you said, there are people on pow in power, people on top, pushing a very specific agenda. And I think that's something that most people can concede to. But what do you think on him? Yeah. So the brother said that it's not something that's like what's in the movies. And that's true to an extent. And what I mean by to an extent is that like, uh, I would classify the dunya as the matrix, but it's not the matrix like in the movie. It's just the dunya is basically the matrix that we live in, the the simulation that we live in, but it has nothing to do with the actual movie. It's completely different. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And that's a question I would actually like to ask Andrew Tate. We should, uh, we should write that down. Write it down for if, inshallah, one day we get Inshallah, to inshallah, if we ever get to talk to him, bro. Inshallah, you know. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> All right, let me remove some of these uh, and jump to the next one. And just to put it straight, as Muslims, we don't need anyone to be by our side because we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also shouldn't believe the nose without anything, uh, with anything they say, to be honest, especially without any proof of accusations, 100%. Yeah. And this actually leads me to another topic that is related that I want to discuss, which is how should Muslims react when there is kind of a Muslim in, in, uh, in the news and it's being claimed that they did X, Y, Z. Um, as Muslims, we are obligated, obligated to review the evidence and see what was actually done based on the evidence 
before we come to any conclusion or verdict or slander or backbite or whatever. And I would I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if some false news ever comes out about me or Anhel or Fayed or, or one of our very close brothers, that Muslims will give them the benefit of the doubt until there's evidence for whatever is being claimed about them. There is a very clear example of how the media loves to just use very, very extreme titles. And I mentioned The Guardian using 6,500 migrant workers were as a result of the World Cup in Qatar. But that number was highly misleading um, because it wasn't 6,500 based on building the structure. It was literally every migrant worker who, by the way, two thirds of the population are migrant workers who passed in Qatar for any reason since the announcement of the World Cup being held there, which was 12, like 12 years ago. So you see how they love to like throw things in there and they're rarely ever held to account when they basically lie. So let's be careful, inshallah. And also any profanity will be blocked immediately. No timeout for you bad people. You get blocked completely. I like that. I like what you said, man, because we got to remember that the news, the media, they always have an agenda. They always have a specific thing that they're trying to get through, like a narrative that they're trying to push through. And if if they are trying to push this through, and this narrative that they're trying to push through is a result of people that are actually higher up than them, that are, you know, maybe giving them the money or the paycheck, whatever it is, right? It's, it, there's this, like, hierarchy that's going on, like you, you kind of mentioned. And we have to take everything, like, at face value, and then we have to, like you said, evaluate the evidence. Because if we just accept something that like they say blindly, ooh, ooh, bro, you, you're an NPC at that point. You're a sheep, you know? And, like, I think as Muslims, that's one thing that we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be sheep. We shouldn't be NPCs. 100%. And on, on top of that, Allah will hold you accountable. Every word you say, of, and think about it. Like, there are people who really don't like entry. Like, they hate him. Imagine getting bad deeds because you spoke bad about him because he's a Muslim now. You know, the, what, what in your eyes, what bigger L could you, could you take? So let's be fair. Not for Andrew Tate, not for me, not for Anhil, for the sake of Allah. And actually, for the ben ben benefit of your own self. Because if and you do any wrong, the Allah SWT is going to be the one to hold you accountable. I'm not going to, you know, put anything to your throat and make you apologize. Allah SWT will hold you accountable. <clears throat> and Allah SWT is severe in punishment. So that's something we should all be conscious of inshallah uh, marwan says the most funny thing is that they created human rights and after they imposed their laws to other countries uh don't even but don't even respect them by doing worse things like in libya syria iraq very very true very true um you know what this reminds me of what you remember that that funny interview with the uh ugandan uh, yeah, interviewer yeah. <clears throat> yeah 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 the it was a human rights activist yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's just um, I was just throwing it in there because the whole human rights thing is it's kind of funny if you dig deeper into it. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because I mean, they made the criteria, and then they enforce a criteria on other people. They are currently even in Qatar to this day condemning nations based on that criteria, and then they themselves have been breaking that same criteria for the last decade. And, and it's it's funny because people will will reject the idea of a deep state, of a matrix of people on top with with certain agendas that are being pushed and so on and so forth, because we have, you know, certain practices like freedom of speech and things they like to say that don't actually really exist, especially nowadays. Uh, when you have things like, for example, after World War One, uh, America put in this law saying that you can basically you cannot make the military look bad. You can't have any propaganda against the military. You can't lie about the military. You actually can't even say truthful things about the military if it looks if it makes them look bad. And you can't reveal any you know military documents that are classified or whatever footage that's classified. Um, you know, or else you'll you'll serve up to like 174 years in prison, right? Which is like two lifetimes, right? So this is this is insane. And the reason this is insane is because recently there was a guy who founded an organization called WikiLeaks. And they recently leaked a very specific video from um, the military, the U.S. military. And I think it was Iraq, but I'm not sure. You guys can verify that. 
And there was a, a bunch of people. There was one guy holding a camera, literally a camera over his shoulder. There were kids. There was somebody on the phone. They were just walking. And the soldiers, mm. they were in, you know, when you play Mar for two and you're, yeah, you're in the AC-130, right? You know, the view from the AC-130, you see like the gray, it's a black and white image. You see the crosshairs. That was the, their view. They were literally in like a, a gunship or some kind of um, a drone or something. And the soldiers were asking, do we have permission to engage? Do we have permission to engage? And one guy literally was like, come on, man, let us shoot. Let us shoot. Like he's begging to shoot these innocent people. And they got permission and they did it. Long story short, WikiLeaks got a hold of that video. They leaked it to the world. What does America do? What does America do? Do they A, apologize for what happened? Do they B, punish the, the, the militants and the, the commander at the time? C, say that they're going to take precautions to make sure this does not happen again and reimburse the families and help them in any way? Or C, or sorry, or D, say it's not our fault and actually blame the person who released the tape for releasing the tape. Newsflash, it was D. Not only did they not admit fault or help the innocent people who, whose family were, you know, offed, or like even, even admit it was a slip at the slightest. They said it's not our fault at all. And now they're going to put the man in jail for up to 174 years. What's even crazier? is this man's not even a U.S. citizen. He's not a Canadian citizen. He's an Australian citizen residing in the U.K. So America wants him so bad that they've been pushing to get him uh, extradited from the U.K. to America just so they can throw him in prison. Yo. I know. Don't talk about this stuff. Huh? I was about to say, bro, you, you're trying to put a price on my head. I'm in the U.S. right now, man. Come on. Why? Just, just yell at me and say, you're wrong. We fight for liberalism. We fight for democracy. What are you talking about? Well, well hey, technically, we, we don't know 100% what we're speaking of. So, you know, no they one can't, ever knows they can't 100% say what they're speaking of unless they are using the most basic of, of facts. Bro, when we speak about Islam, we know 100% what we're speaking of. Pardon me? When we speak about Islam, we know 100% what we're speaking of. Um, Not always. Yeah, we know 100% of what is revealed. That's what we speak of. We don't speak of anything else other than what is revealed. Yeah, but there's interpretation involved in stuff. Of course, bro. Um, side note, Discord server, inshallah, I think we will be starting up uh, a Discord server very soon. I think it's long overdue. And I personally never saw the value in it until recently. So I think it, it will be good, inshallah, for the community. Um, Incursion says it's insane how the World Cup had little to no coverage in the mainstream media in the West. Yeah, there are people who didn't even show the opening ceremony. Like they didn't want to see Morgan Freeman up there or something. Like I don't know what's wrong with these people. <clears throat> Is Rami named after Rama? I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Rami means like thrower or archer, which is why I want to go um uh, to an archery range, but I haven't yet. Uh, inshallah, I'll keep you guys posted on, on if I'm actually good or not. If I live up to the name. <laughs> um, another thing is, so what impact do you think um, Andrew Tate being a Muslim has on the whole like uh, attack against him or, or dislike of him? I think it's, it's, it's something that these people who, okay, look, if, if there are people, if there are people, we'll say like that. You know, if there are people that are higher up and they are like orchestrating this whole thing, and um, first they try to cancel him, and then now they try to falsely imprison him. And on a side note, he actually made a video where he said that when you play this game, you have three lives. And the first one is uh, you get canceled. Mm -hmm. and then the second one is you get falsely imprisoned. And if the first or the second one don't work, then the third one is you pretty much get off. Right? So it's like, if if we're talking about that, then uh, technically he's he's going on to his last life in this game. Uh, so may Allah protect him in that regard. But getting back on topic, how does uh, him being Muslim affect this whole thing? Bro, they can use that heavily, heavily to try to throw uh, Islam under the bus as they've been trying to do this entire time. They've been trying to make Islam look at like it's a, a religion of uh, 
T. You know what I'm saying? You know, they, they try to make this this religion to be something that's like uh, violent and um, something that's pretty much, it's, it's just not what it is. It's a very peaceful religion when you actually look into it. It's a very just, very fair religion. It's it's exactly what it should be. It's, it's, it's the truth, you know? But they're gonna use it, bro. If they get any, if they get any sort of like hate on him or something like this, bro, they're just gonna use it as like, ah, look, he became Muslim, and and Muslims are this, this, and this, and it's like, bro, the sheep that are listening to this uh, material, they just they already think badly about Islam. Now they're gonna think even worse about Islam. Yeah, one hundred percent, and. It's, it's funny because in regards to the whole like matrix deep state conversation, um, I think like those people and their specialists and whatever know more about Islam than the common person, especially Islamic history and what holds Muslims and Islam together. Because if you just read history and see what happened after World War I, which again, their enemies were the Muslims, they split up the Middle East into all these different nations to keep them divided based on nationalism. Why did they do that? Why? They did that because we are commanded by Allah. Hold on to the rope of Allah altogether and do not become divided. Because what happens when you're divided? You lose your strength. You lose your power. That's why you have a billion Muslims. Two billion Muslims almost around the whole world which is what a quarter of the population and we have no strength, no authority or anything. That's because they split us up and made us disunited. So they understand Islam very, very, very intricately. And they've been working since they broke Islam apart up until this point to make sure it does not remain a power, which is why they went and attacked a lot of the countries in the Middle East. How many stable countries are there politically and economically in the Middle East that have not basically fully... Uh, uh, adopted this Western liberal democratic way of life, or they're not willing, you know, to go against what the West says. There aren't any. Is that a coincidence? Oh, we, we got to chill talking about America, bro. <laughs> it's not a coincidence, man. Bro. We definitely got to chill talking about America, bro. Like, next thing you know, I'm going to go missing. Why would they take you, bro? You're, you're I not don't know, me. man. I'm just I'm playing around. I'm playing around. <laughs> but crazy. seriously, like when we when we talk about things like this, we should definitely we should definitely leave it to um like off public type thing, whether it be like a Discord or whether it be like on our website or something like this. Because I mean, bro, there's so much that we can say, but then again, like on YouTube, on YouTube, bro, like <laughs> come on, come on, bro. Time, time. Okay. Inshallah, very soon we're gonna revamp our website. So any, uh, any topics or content we cannot put on YouTube for, um, you know, community purposes, we will put on our website. Inshallah. So if any of you guys are web developers and have spare time and want to, uh, help us revamp the website, Inshallah, we welcome you on board. And uh, if not, then I'll probably try and do it myself. But it might not come out too nice. <laughs> Uh, people are saying rumble 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 would be actually the, the easier way inshallah it's an option inshallah. <laughs> inshallah yeah um should you go to high school if there's so if there's much haram um interesting question where do you live that's okay. uh, another like context question that i would like to ask that's a good question and, and haram, like in what sense? What is haram? Is it because there are sisters there? Is it what they're teaching you? All that stuff is important. Yeah. And um, I think at a certain age, you can, some places you can basically do high school courses and credits online. You get a diploma online. Um, yeah. if it's really that difficult. Just take your math and science and, and English and then, you know, you'll be good, inshallah. In America, you can do this. Mm-hmm. It's called, um, at least in the, the state that I used to live in, in Florida, they call it uh, FLVS, Florida Virtual School. Oh, FL, wow. Florida, I think Florida Learning Virtual School or something like this. But yeah, like I, I think I took the whole ninth grade on uh, online. Wow. That must have been and, chill, man. Nah, it sucked, actually. 
because oh. you know it's you, as like when you're younger you want to be like you want to go to school to be around friends yeah that's true so when you're home alone as a, like a ninth grader it's uh it gets a little a little sad bro there's only so much call of duty and runescape that you can play at that point yeah that's very yeah. true bro enough call of duty you'll just end up going mad those lobbies are pretty toxic, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, did I go to a, a Christian school? Yeah, I went to a Catholic school um, for all four years. Um, this person said, uh, Andrew literally, where, where was the thing? Andrew literally snitched on himself. It was a bit funny the way they caught him. Did, do you know how they caught him? How did they catch him? So he made a video on um, he posted on Twitter to that that Greta Thunberg Thunberg uh, person, and in the video he brought out like pizza boxes and they f they saw what the logo was and then they called the pizza store and asked where it was delivered and that's how they got his address and they pulled up apparently apparently I haven't heard anything like solid about that or since anything solid but that's what um, almost everyone is saying about it. Damn. Yeah. But it doesn't matter how smart we are, whether it's like book smart or street smart, like at some point you're gonna you're gonna miss something and you're gonna get got somewhere, bro. Yeah. But nothing will strike us except, you know, uh, illa bi illa, except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, of course, of course. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I'm yeah, of course I already knew he was in Romania, of course, but um why would why wouldn't they just arrest him like on the spot? That's what I was curious about. Like, how did he get in without uh, even being arrested on the spot? <clears throat> yeah, they probably got the location from, from some kind of source. Because I highly doubt that he would just have like a specific place that he goes to, and like the government and everything just knows. Okay, this is his location and all that. And, like, if he's talking about the Matrix and all this stuff. And if the Matrix is really after him, like, why would you have something that's, like, well-known? Like, oh, this is where a state can get me. You know, like, so I, I'm pretty sure there had to have been some kind of source that gave out his whereabouts. Yeah. Allahu Adam. Allahu Adam. Yeah, Allah very best. Um, somebody asked a, um, actually, I think a very good question. Um, if I can find it, I keep losing these. Uh, sorry, I can't put your comment up because I can't find it. But somebody asked, what do we think of... Uh, the tweets that he was making in regards to Greta and like all that stuff. Have you seen it? So, I don't know. I feel like Andrew Tate is a lot more like a lot of what he says is, is more like exacerbated and and polarizing and uh, a little. I don't even know the word. A little rude, to be honest, in some regards. Um, whereas when you listen to him speak in person on podcasts with people. It, for me, it doesn't give that that same kind of vibe. Um, I first want to say that I, I I don't think it was it's worth it really engaging in in such a manner with with people, especially like a nineteen year old. Um, I just don't see the benefit in that. If if he wanted to attack the movement or something she said in particular, I think that would be um, that would be a lot better. If there was something a reason to attack the movement, a reason to attack what she said, if she said something. And I'm speaking from ignorance because I don't know what she's done and what she said. I think that would be better. But to kind of engage in the petty discussion, this is on her part as well. To go back and forth in this pettiness, I think is really cringy, to be honest. I think we should just have civil, normal conversations. Um, yeah. And, yeah, go on. No, I think it's, I think it's uh, carefully calculated. You know, I think this is all done where it's like, it's truly done for shock value. And um, they'll, they'll have shark value, but then, like, if you really look at his content on the podcast and, like, when he speaks on, like, normal things and normal videos and stuff like this, the shark content, shark value is, like, maybe 20 to 40%, and then the rest of it is, like, actual practical advice or just, like, normal conversation, yeah. normal, like, real-life stuff, right? So it's, like, he the man is smart. He knows what he's doing when it comes to marketing, bro. So it's like, uh, we can look at it and be like, oh, no, like you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. And it's like, yeah, yeah, this is true. But you can't you can't deny that he knows what he's doing. 
Yeah, 100 percent. I'm not saying that he's he's I mean, he's the most popular person probably in on the Internet right now. Um, I'm not saying from a like pragmatic standpoint, from a publicity standpoint, but I'm just saying mainly from an Islamic perspective. Um, it's not yeah. befitting of a Muslim to engage in these kind of things, to use that kind of language to say. And the only reason like I, I haven't really said anything about it publicly is because he's a new revert. Um, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like it gets to a point where it's like, yeah, you have to advise our brother. So for him and everybody else, you know, there are mannerisms that a Muslim needs to have that the Prophet had when he engaged with people. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he tells us to basically speak words of peace, even to like jahil people, to even to like angry, ignorant people, to speak words of peace. Allah tells us to basically effectively and efficiently and politely debate with people and argue and discuss, but not in like an argumentative fashion, but mm -hmm. in a logical and rational way. Um, and also with good character. The Prophet Sallallahu said the best of you are those with the best of character. And I think that this is something that can only help the message of Islam and um, and by extension, the message that Andrew Tate wants to to promote, inshallah, so long as it is in line with what Islam is teaching. Inshallah. I wonder if anyone's actually told him. Allahu Alam. Yeah. yeah. One was best. I mean, but he lives in, in the UAE and he's probably around a lot of people. Who do practice? He probably has contacts with uh, multiple sheikhs. Yeah, I mean, he was even in contact with uh, Faris Al Hamadi. Um, I just I wonder, man, like if anyone's actually said anything to him. Yeah. Um, I know, like I know, I know what you said. He's he's very new as well. He's a revert, so these things are to be taken into consideration. But at the same time, too, like. I wonder if he's like reached, he's received this, he's received this like nasiha, this advice, but it's not him who's actually putting certain stuff up. So it's someone else that's like in control of like the the whole marketing stuff and like what's being put out there in the, the little clips and stuff like this. And he's just kind of like letting it go or maybe he's, he's just not out aware of it right now. I don't Allah. Know. Allah knows best, he, but I don't know. I can't even sing them though. Yeah. Allahu Alam. Allahu Alam. Um Allah knows best. At at the end of the day, it's 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 for the Muslims who have the ability. You know, the Prophet he said when he's seen injustice or anything that's wrong, uh, to stop it with your hands. And if you can't, then stop it with your mouth. And if you can't, then at the very least you hate it in your heart. You know, you, you don't like that thing in your heart. That's all we can really do, inshallah. Um I I'm I'm wondering why does everyone hate Greta so much? I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I don't know anything about her other than her being like a um, climate change activist and all that stuff, which I do want to talk a little bit about because I, I definitely don't know a lot about it, but I do think there is a point to be made because I've heard, I think actually Andrew Tate himself said it in a video. Uh, Candace Owens said it on Joe Rogan's podcast. And I think there's this really weird narrative going around that climate change is a lie or a myth. And I think that there are two extremes possibly in this case. And I would like to hear what uh, you guys have to say about it, inshallah. But everyone's kind of just like insulting her. Um, you know, she's a woke mob freak. She's a climate change girl. Okay, but like, can I can I get a reason, explanation, not just name calling and stuff? I don't think that's beneficial. But <clears throat> there is, um, I think that perhaps there's two sides to like two extremes in the situation. I think there are people that are saying climate change is not real, which I think is, is, is crazy to say, to be completely honest. Um, um, because it's something that is, is, is testable. It's something that's foreseeable. It's something that is, is um, uh, measurable. You can measure the rate in which the climate is changing. What we are doing to the ozone layer, what we are doing to the earth. And we could see that like, yeah, it's getting hotter faster at a faster rate. This whole thing about the ch weather changes all the time that Candace Olds was saying on Jorgen's podcast, I think is very, uh, very fallacious because it's a straw man. And Joe Rogan, I'm sorry, I don't completely dislike Joe Rogan, but when you make Joe Rogan seem like, like, like a brilliant person, like brilliant, I think you're on the wrong side of the, the battlefield, to be completely honest. Because um, he was explaining to her how climate change works and, and he broke it down and called out her fallacy and a straw man. And it's very true. Climate change definitely work, or definitely is, is, is a problem. But I think there's another extreme, which is let me use this problem to benefit as much as possible. There, maybe there are people who want to pass bills to tax uh, you no know, middle class and, and the average person more to fight climate change instead of just fighting it themselves, going at the corporations that's causing this mass pollution and all of these issues. Um, that's the extent of my knowledge on it. So what do you guys think? 
this person says, coffee lover says, Rami, you should know that you should know climate change. You should know climate change hoax is exaggerated by the left to get votes and scare people. So is it a hoax? Is it completely made up? Or is it something that's true that's exaggerated? Which one is it? I think it is true. And maybe it is exaggerated. But but that doesn't mean it's not an issue. And I, I don't think, actually, I don't think exaggerated is the right word to use. I don't. I think that's wrong. Exaggerated is definitely not the right word to use because what are they exaggerating? The issue? No, because the issue is a big problem. What, they're, what they might be doing is using that problem that does exist, that is an issue that we need to fix, to benefit themselves. Maybe they have plans so that they can make more money, whatever it is. Allahu Adam. It wouldn't be completely impossible in this capitalistic world that we live in. Mm. Sorry, Anil, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I was going to say we should look at it through the lens of a Muslim, right? And we got to understand that everything in this world is uh, it's meant as a sign. And this in and of itself, like whether it's it's um, as bad as they make it out to be or not, uh, like you said, it's you can be you can see it. it's real, like it's happening, like something is clearly happening, and it's a sign in and of itself, you know. Because I was watching this one video where these uh these people who are not Muslim they're talking about how water came to the earth, and they said that when the earth first started supposedly like this it was just like a rock like it had no water supposedly and that water came from the um like asteroids or, or whatever it is like this the comets and if you actually look into it like the comets asteroids are, are primarily composed of water and then it's like when you look in the quran allah is like literally telling us like that he brought down water he brought down the water to the earth to the dunya and um he can also take it away. And it's like, just, I don't know, just looking at that, just listening to that, and then kind of reflecting on this, it, it makes me think like, okay, well, this is clearly a sign, you know, and we should look at it as that, because it's it's a sign letting us know that this is all temporary, it's all going to be taken away very, very soon. And um, instead of trying to uh, get to the point of whether, oh, is it is it really real? Is it not real? Is it um as bad as they're making it out to be is it not as bad as they make it out to be i think we should just take it as that as a sign reflect on it and just come closer to allah inshallah inshallah our uh brother here i think is the brother says can, can you be sure of his sincerity of his conversion history is full of fakes he may fabricate agendas or may use muslims to protect himself from the matrix i like him but not trust him for the moment well we can never really know if someone is sincere or not. Um, and as Umar radiallahu anhu said, he narrated that when the Quran was being revealed and the Prophet was alive, we would use the Quran as a way to, you know, basically judge people, right? But after the revelation stopped, we would go based on their actions, what we can see from them. What I have seen from him personally recently has mainly only been good things. Obviously, he's a human. I think he's had slips here and there. But I think for the most part, he seems to be very sincere. You might have a different opinion, Allah Adam, but at the end of the day, it's not for us to, to, to judge or take action on that part. You can judge and have an opinion and be wary, Allah Adam, no worries. But uh, there's no action we can really take and we can't say he's not sincere. That's something you cannot say. Um, so we have to be careful. Uh, history full of fakes, okay, maybe he may fabricate agendas. Again, maybe I don't think Muslims have much power to protect them against any, any agenda or whatever. I think Islam has a solution. But for him to use a solution, he'd have to be a sincere Muslim. I think he is, inshallah. Yeah, and as Muslims, we should avoid suspicion of our brothers and sisters in Islam. Like, whether he's sincere or not, that's that's Allah that knows, and we, we probably might never know. That's very right? true. Like, it's, it's like asking, oh, is Rami sincere? Am I sincere? Like, how would y'all know? Because we have YouTube videos that talk about Islam? Because we've been Muslim for X amount of years, like, how would that be the uh, the factor that indicates our sincerity? Like, only Allah knows. Like, we there's no way we can actually know. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. That's very true. One one hadith that kept coming up is the hadith where um, there is one Sahabi who was at the battlefield fighting in a war, and they were chasing after this one man to to basically strike him down because he was fighting against them, and the man before he was struck down. 
he said the shahada he said ashhadu ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah he said the shahada he accepted islam right before he was about to be you know offed and the sahabi offed him anyways and the prophet sallam when he heard about this he he asked the sahabi he's like he's like basically why did you do it why would you you know do that to someone who just accepted the shahada he said he was just doing it the sahabi said to the prophet sallam he was just doing it so he can live that's it he wasn't being sincere the prophet sallam he said, did you open up his heart and see what was inside of it? This is someone who was literally five seconds ago just fighting against the Muslims. Five seconds ago. And Prophet ﷺ asked, did you open his heart and see what was inside of it? I think that speaks volumes, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Um, there's another ayah actually in Surah Ar-Rum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Corruption has appeared throughout the land and sea by what the hands of people have earned. May uh, Allah may let them taste part of the consequence for what they have done, so perhaps they will return you know, to righteousness, to, to piety, to goodness. And if you see what this huge capitalistic system has produced and um, you know how we have become so industrialized, it's produced all these greenhouse gases which, by the way, basically majority of it is is produced by corporations and these factories and all all these, um, you know, production facilities, and it's breaking the ozone layer, and it is you know corrupting, damaging the earth. You know, all the plastics that we put in the sea and all that stuff is 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 done by human beings, and we're seeing the result of of our actions here as human beings. So, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has put us as a Khalifa on this earth. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said He announced the angels. I'm putting on the earth a khalifa. A khalifa meaning what? A successor. Uh, someone to take charge. A ruler. The leader. Human beings are like the leader of the earth. Which means you have, yes, rights and so on and so forth. But you have huge responsibilities. Huge responsibilities. And when you have the wrong people in power, you have um, corruption and taghut and um, tyranny upon the whole earth. Yeah, yeah. To give a further example about the whole like sincerity aspect, um, I won't say any names because I don't want to expose anyone's sins here. But I know this brother who is supposedly a sheikh. He's a scholar, and he's you know he was very trusted. He like was looked up by many people. People went to him for much, much advice and uh, guidance on certain things. Not guidance, it was guidance from a lot, but clarity on certain things. And then come to find out that this uh, sheikh was stealing money from the masjid, from the donations. You know, and like, how would anyone have known? Because in, in, in everyone's eyes, this man was sincere. This man's a scholar. He studied Islam. How could he not be sincere? So again... Only Allah knows what's within someone's heart. Like we will never know what's in someone's heart. So is Andrew Tate sincere? Allah knows best. Yeah, Allah Alam. And it's not even beneficial really to, to question things like this. Um in this manner. So I'm just going through some of the comments right now. I wanted to uh, progress and move on to different topics, but it feels like everyone is uh, staying on this topic, understandably. Um, there's this one thing that I've seen a few times. I love Rami, but I'm disappointed in this climate change propaganda. Um, just listen, I'm, I'm open to any evidence. Give me the evidence. Show me why it's fake and, and false and propaganda. What parts of it are wrong? I'm willing to learn. I've said what I, I know so far, or at least what I, I believe and think I know so far. If anyone disagrees, please um, just give me the evidence for it. <clears throat> Muslims might must follow the straight path 100%. 100%. Uh, this is a funny question. Where do you get your plant in the background? Fayad got it from, I think, like a thrift store or something like that. It's not real. <laughs> this this office is fully enclosed. It, uh, it would die very, very soon, unfortunately. 
Um, does no one care that Elon Musk is pushing propaganda that Islam stands with the rain rainbow agenda? Um, I've not seen that. I've not seen that. Someone else commented saying that he put like the Islamic like half moon and crescent thing with the like rainbow flag. I didn't see this. A lot of people don't understand Islam. I think Elon Musk is another person who's very, very ignorant of Islam and what it actually has to offer. Because you guys have to understand, Islam has been reduced nowadays. Islam has been reduced to uh, something that is just in the heart, something that is just in the home, something that is just in the masjid. But that's not what Islam is. Islam encompasses literally everything in life, every, every aspect of human affairs. Islam has some kind of position, stance, or ruling on it. So um, to say that it's something that's just in you know, the heart or just in the house is completely false. Um, they think it's progressive. They think all these, these ludicrous things, but they don't actually understand what Islam is. So I would like to talk to people like Elon Musk to educate them on Islam and tell them what, it, you know, what it's about and how it can actually help them in their lives and um, many of the nations that are struggling. I wonder how you actually talk to someone like Elon Musk about Islam. <laughs> When he, this man is like, like, I feel like you you be you be talking to him and his mind would just be somewhere else, you know. Like <laughs> this man is trying to go to Mars, bro. He's trying to develop like some kind of like a uh, community, some place where people can actually live in Mars. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you just tweet at him or something. He owns Twitter. No, no, no. I'm saying, like, in person, like, how would... I just don't understand, like, how you would get through to someone like this. Um, Allahu Alam. Allahu Alam. Um, I don't know. A lot of people have this weird this weird thought that they, since they see somebody online a lot, that they know them. And they go and try and talk to them in person like they know them. And then this guy's like, I don't know who the heck you are. And it's like, it's an awkward moment. But I think it would have to come from the people close to him. Um, yeah. Or obviously from somebody who he, he trusts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best thing we can do, I think, is just make videos and uh, speaking about it, and and mention him by name, and and politely just educate him on Islam. Inshallah, Inshallah, Rabb. Is it haram to smoke weed? So first and foremost, go ask a scholar. This is one of the more basic ones. So generally, yes, it's haram to smoke weed. Um, there actually perhaps can be exceptions, like medically speaking. Um, but that is. You have to go to a sheikh about that and to a doctor about that and uh, get the ruling from him. But generally, it's haram to smoke weed. <clears throat> you shouldn't make a show out of Islam. That is what happened with some Muslims and Andrew Tate. And that is what happened with how people were watching the Morocco Moroccan football time. Um, what do you mean with make a show out of Islam? I'm curious what that means. And I think a lot of people are actually, they really fell in love with the, um, you know, Islamic etiquettes of the Moroccan team where they would go into sujood after, you know, in celebration, they would go in prostration to Allah. They would go celebrate with their mothers. You know, these are things that have Islamic uh, bases to them and, and roots to them. So I think people really actually appreciated that. Yeah, it's like uh, Habib Namagomenov. When yeah. he would win the fights, he would go into prostration. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And that's why a lot of people ended up coming to Islam because of, of characters yeah. like Habib. So to say like don't Islam shouldn't be made a show, like, I get where you're coming from, but okay. You're gonna tell that to someone who influenced thousands, if not maybe millions of people. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And generally this is this is very general, but like generally when you criticize someone, you have to ask yourself, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, and this is not about me, but this is about anyone. Like, if you're going to cr criticize people like the Moroccan team or, or someone like, um, you know, like Muhammad Hijab or anyone who gives dawah, you have to ask yourself, what are you doing for the sake of the dawah? You're sitting behind a yeah. computer, and it's very easy to criticize from the point of being behind a computer and commenting, especially with an anonymous profile. But to put yourself out there for the sake of Allah and work and be, you know, from the the sabiqun, from the forerunners, you know, that's not something that is easy. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards these people so much because they're doing the work of you know that the prophets alayhum salam were doing so let's be careful inshallah when we criticize people one amongst the things that i think we should learn is good character and that's something i hope inshallah to learn myself and to teach you guys um good etiquette and good character from an islamic perspective 
Yeah. It's easy to, you know, criticize someone else, but to criticize ourselves, that's hard. Yeah. Very true. Hard. There is a hadith. I don't know if it was from the Prophet Sallallahu himself or from a Sahabi. Um, someone please let me know. Uh, but there was a hadith that mentioned um, that said, hold yourself accountable before you're taken to account. Mm -hmm. Very, mm -hmm. very powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. May Allah make us yeah. sincere. I mean, I mean, Ya Rab. I mean, Ya Rab. People are going, people are asking crazy things now. What are they asking? Biryani or Mandi? That's what the conversation has gone to now. <laughs> Come on, bro. Mandi. I was about to say the same thing, bro. Thanks, man. Mandi is just. Alhamdulillah. Oh my God. Bro. It's amazing, man. It really is. Yeah. It's amazing. And now, not like, bro, my, my mom and my wife know the recipe. So when they make it, like, I don't have to drive all the way to Mississauga an hour and a half to get it and pay 100 bucks for it. My mom and my wife make it. Beautiful. May Allah bless them. Ameen, bro. Allahumma ameen. Yo, I'm still thinking about that uh, coconut cake that your mom made a while back. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. God. May Allah yeah. bless her, bro. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. ameen. You had, like, half, half the cake. <laughs> no, bro. I think I had the entire thing. She made it twice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's funny, man. But you made those uh plantain things, right? Yeah, yeah, the lo lo maduro. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, yeah, mashallah. Um, our brother here, um, again, just like last stream, misspelt on hill. Uh, they said Rami has a beautiful nah, beard. Nah. Um, you do have a beautiful beard, man. Allahumma bari. Well, better it's you. um bro like i remember when you were trying to grow it out and you're like oh bro like it's not growing in it's not growing in and mashallah look at it now bro alhamdulillah alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. yeah you just gotta put in that work with the derma roller with beard oil monoxide were you oil. actually doing that i was doing that yeah mashallah. alhamdulillah i i actually i shouldn't have stopped because it's still like very you know what's the word it'll, it's patchy it'll come in It'll come in, bro. But if you were to start it up back, like, I mean, it wouldn't hurt, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I missed some super chats. There's this one. Yeah, we had um we had one of the, the subscribers, they reached out to me on Instagram saying that we ignored their chat, but we definitely didn't ignore it. It's just sometimes <laughs> we we just miss them. No, no, I, I saw I got the same messages because of what he said in the super chat. It was um not oh, gotcha. Um, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh but brother Raymond says, sadly, I saw this live very late. God bless my brothers, and inshallah. 2023, bring even more blessings. Allahumma amin ya Rabbi. Allah bless us all. Allahumma amin. Amen. Thank you uh, for tuning in. Inshallah, you can always rewind the tape and go back. Um uh don't know if this is the real Sajid Lifham. I'm gonna assume it's not, but um Sajid Lifham, because he donated pounds. I don't think he's in uh the UK or anywhere, but if Andrew in Tate US. Yeah, if Andrew Tate gets killed, uh, oh, I mean, oft, um, I'm convinced the matrix, the matrix exists. If that's what it takes for you to understand, then I think maybe you need to readjust your criteria because I think there are many other evidences yeah. that yeah. Um, you can point towards, you know. There's it's like making history, bro. Yeah. It's, it's all like it takes. History. There's so many people that, like, the moment they spoke out, but. He's got to go now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ishaq says, Salam. Wa alaikum salam. What is your advice for finding a partner? Mm. First thing I would say is get closer to Allah. And, um, you know, start getting more on deen as well. And then from there, you praise the Qadr. And you ask Allah to put the appropriate person in your life. It just kind of happens from there, you know, like we do our part and Allah takes care of the rest. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. 100%. Alhamdulillah. You got to, you know, you got to take action. You got to network. You got to talk to your married friends, ask if their wives, ask them to ask their wives if they have any friends and so on and so forth. But it's, it will happen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. That's, I think that's how, how it is for everyone. They're looking, they're looking, then they, they finally find someone and they're like, wow, you know, this came out of nowhere. It's only going to happen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. 
um people are calling me out rightfully so because um i don't have my currencies right I'm trying to find the comment here um pound That's, euro uh, I, either I way about, either way sergeant lipham yeah is in us so yes. it would be usd not pound or euro yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. um <clears throat> I, uh, True Boxing King says, uh, Salamu alaikum, ya, ya ikhwa. Just wanted to drop in. I'm also, I don't know. Bariqua. Salute on him. Been Muslim for almost 28 years. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, bro. 28 years is a long time, bro. May Allah Allahumma. bless you. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Dude, I'm, I'm 29, man. Allahumma barak. Subhanallah. Uh, dang. When you were one, he accepted Islam. Sheesh. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, Wa alaikum salam wa May Allah bless you, bro. I mean, yo, Donuts, another think... chat says, You think the West would ever allow a Muslim country that follows Sharia fully? Absolutely not. Uh, the night and day between societies would be crazy. Listen, there is literally no way on the face of the earth. That uh, they would be okay with that. Of course not. Of course not, bro. I mean, look at the. And this is me like speaking about Muslim countries without saying anything uh, bad, because this is actually a good thing if you think about it. But um, in in Muslim countries, um, even though supposedly Sharia is not uh, adhered to a hundred percent, they have a lot of aspects of Sharia. So, like, for instance, if, if someone steals and there's evidence, there's four witnesses, then you're getting your hand chopped off, especially if it's over X amount and you're over a certain age and stuff like this, and everything lines up perfectly. It's like, bro, I told that to my mom, and she was disgusting. She's like, how could that, how could you guys do something like this? I'm like, are you serious? It's like, let me ask you something. If you go, if you, there was a possibility of your hand getting chopped off, would you ever steal anything? And she's like, no, that's that's barbaric. I was like, exactly. And 100%. sadly, that that's just how it is in America, man. It's it's a soft, soft yeah. place. Yeah. And and if you think about it, I was actually reflecting on this recently. Not only is it a, a huge deterrent, but it will basically stop you from ever stealing again. How are you going to steal with one hand? Yeah. How are you going to do that, bro? You're going to like grab and one handful. Bro, and people will look at you and see, like, oh, damn, like, he stole. Look what happened to him. And they're like, no, no, I don't want that. Yeah, yeah. But also, there's a possibility of someone just losing their hand in war or naturally, and then, you know? That's facts, yeah. That's hey, but facts. how are you going to rob people? Are you going to be like, you're going to be like, put the money in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for real, for real, for real. <laughs> um, but it, it's like, if you were to compare it to what they do in uh, Western prisons, it's like, Okay, someone someone robs, and they just put them in jail for X amount of time, and they get out of jail, and it's basically what like it's a little slap on the wrist, and then they go back and do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And also, they're less deterred from doing it because worst case scenario, they go to jail for a few years and stay in a prison cell. To some people, that actually doesn't bother them at all, and that's why there's a lot yeah. of second time offenders, third time offenders, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, to them, they see it as like, oh, um, I got caught. How can I better do it to not get caught? That's very true. Very true. Uh, Fitri says, may Allah bless his channel with barakah. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. Ameen. May Allah bless you. Ameen. Ameen. Uh, Stupot says, <laughs> always great to see you guys. Uh, I've not been to Friday Masjid yet. I'm kind of anxious about going as I don't know much Arabic. Hopefully I get there next week. Inshallah. May Allah bless you. Make it easy for you. You don't need to know Arabic to go. Trust yeah. me. You're going to walk in. Maybe say, as alaikum, as alaikum. Great people. You're going to sit down. You're going to listen to a lecture. You're going to get up. And you're going to be led in a prayer. So you just have to follow along, inshallah. Don't worry. Yeah, you'll see that your mind was uh, making it out to be a bigger deal than it actually was. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, inshallah, we're, um, we're going to come to a close very soon. We'll take a few more comments and questions. Uh, and then we will wrap it up. Inshallah. I do think a discord for us would be prime. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Like if, if we create streams like on Discord, but it's like proper, proper, like private streams, or we can technically we can say whatever we want on these streams. 
Like that's real, bro. That's that's the realest podcast in the dunya. This is like the realest edited podcast in the dunya. The <laughs> the realest. What is it? Um, it's not filtered, but um, reduced. No, no. What what's the word when you are restricted? Yeah, this is like the realest restricted podcast in the dunya. That was funny, man. You could stream on Rumble, yeah, yeah. Um, streams. I don't know. I think for the bigger topics, the tougher ones, we'll probably just pre-record and put them like on our website or something. Shalom. Uh, um, is it true if a married woman refuses to please her man, she will be punished? Well, first and foremost, there is no worldly punishment. Um, that exists. Um, and again, the hadith, what it says is if uh, basically a man wants to be intimate with his wife and his wife, and for context, this is without any reason. She doesn't have any physical ailments. She's not, you know, too physically tired. She's not mentally like uh, drained or out of it or something like that. It would not harm her in any way. But obviously for an alternative reason, she says no, then the angels will curse her. And if you think about it, long story short, there was a huge discussion on TikTok like a year ago about this. Uh, if you think about it, Intimacy in that way means a lot more to a man than it does to a woman for a woman. It's important for both, but men need it more frequently. And um, they're a little more driven by that. So a woman, and there are women, by the way, look it up. It's called sex manipulation. will use it to manipulate their husbands. Oh, you didn't, you, you didn't take out the trash. Well, you're not getting any tonight. Mm -hmm. It's petty and it's toxic and it's not something that is um, congruent with a stable household or relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, if I if I remember correctly, this also applies to the man too. If the woman is requesting to have intimacy with the man, and the man rejects for no apparent reason, then he's also cursed. Am I correct in that? I I don't know. I I haven't heard the the kind of flip interpretation, but it's definitely wrong for a man to wrongfully to do the same thing. Is obviously wrong for him as mm -hmm. well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and he's denying her one of her rights, which is is not something he should do. Yeah. Man, I wanted to put that comment up, but I don't think it would be good. I can't. I, I don't think I should. I should read it. <laughs> Anonymous says the Muslims knew about masculinity in men can be women. We have past great Muslims as a role models, but we needed someone like Andrew Tate to has links to the CIA from his father to speak up. Well, I don't know about the links to the CIA thing. Um, yeah, long I, haven't long I haven't heard of that either. Um, something about your name being an honest makes me not want to trust that information. Allahu alam. But um, yeah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he causes certain people to, to, you know, benefit the community. And sometimes people spread Islam while trying to do the exact opposite without knowing. Mm -hmm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do as he wills. Alhamdulillah. And uh, last super chat, inshallah, we're going to take. Uh, MDX Joseph says, move to Rumble. Shalom. Inshallah. We, that's another thing. Again, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we were discussing maybe putting some content uh, on there. Um, yeah, and what this brother said, I think that's uh, very smart because if you think about it, like, yes, we have the best role models to look back, but we're human, man. Like, sometimes we need something, like, right now that we can physically see and perceive, and Allah always provides that for us. Whether that be our father, whether that be a brother that we just met, a, a scholar, or maybe just some random influencer or something like this. Yeah, one hundred percent, absolutely. And um, I think the the long and the short of it is when the truth comes to you, no matter how it gets to you or where it comes from, when it's the truth and as clear as the truth, you need to accept it. Um, whether it's a young person advising an older person, or a dumb person advising a smart person. Or whatever you know, you might see as a lesser person advising whatever you see as a greater person. And when the truth comes, you have to accept it. Allah says in the Quran, "The truth has come, and false falsehood uh, falsehood has vanished. Indeed, falsehood is bound to vanish. Because when you are given the truth, you can no longer actually believe anything that is false because you've been given the evidence. Your mind will not logically want to conceive that, and if you try to force it, you'll have cognitive dissonance and end up very very upset." Yeah. And at that point, if you reject it, it's just arrogance. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But 
I think, inshallah, with that being said, we're going to close off the stream. Anhel, do you have any final thoughts? All right. Yeah. With that being said, Jazakallah khair for everyone who tuned in. May Allah bless you all immensely. Remember to like, subscribe, share the stream, and uh, don't believe anything till you're given evidence. And with that being said, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.